mentioned that volution is not just this this uh, collection of material and understanding but it's also a practice and i just wonder if you could maybe describe how we could really bring this as a practice into our life mm. yeah great question and uh um well first of all i think it's about adopting the perspective right so reminding ourselves we were so like we're so and everything around the world so reinforces it but we're so trained to to see things in this linear process right to see everything moving forward as progress so it really is a practice to actually adopt a different perspective you know and this idea of something growing growing out like this rather than going up like that um, takes time to um, takes time to reprogram our system as it were uh, for that so the practice is a it's holding the perspective and really just sitting with it and allowing your cells literally a cellular memory to come back of who we are and that and that and that the, uh, the heart is at the center of this right when you look at it not the head and we know from like the work of the heart math institute and, and others the importance of the organ both in terms it also has brain cells right it also it also is actually a knowing uh, body but it knows it from a different uh, space it knows it from a space of of interconnectedness and then mind is useful but it should be second in line so another part of the practice when you've when you've got this sense of possible future possible desired future that's when you work with intention notice that intention is about bringing something into tension literally intention and what we're doing with intention is we are uploading a pattern of information into the field of potential and creating that tension between present and possible future now the illusion that we've created for ourselves through the separation is that we can then control that process of manifestation because of course we're the creators you know we're the ones who could organize it all and yet our scientists telling us that well we only understand four percent of reality they say the rest of it we don't understand we call it dark matter and dark energy so isn't that a bit kind of an, of an illusion to think that when we have this idea of the future that we're the ones who know what the plan is to get there. <laughs> so the key is holding the clear intention, letting go of any attachment as to how that intention might manifest and paying attention to how the rest of life starts to organize itself around us to bring that intention into, into manifestation. What's the bit I have to contribute? You know, and that's not an ego trip, you know, that's that's what's the bit I have to contribute to the bigger whole. You know, what's my piece of the puzzle? And then to let go of the stuff that's maybe not yours to do, but we can trust that other people are gonna do. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't have to do everything. This is also one of the one of the traps of of kind of change makers and planetary activists is oh we ought to save the world and my god, there's so much to do. Yeah, but what's your piece? You know, because the, the the sooner that we crystallize our piece the sooner we'll find the other people who have the complementary pieces. Mm -hmm. If we think we're gonna do it all, then we'll be shutting out the others because we'll feel threatened by them. Mm -hmm. right, but what's my piece? I just notice when, when I, um, I sit with your information, I really sense that it's working internally and there is a process starting and moving and it's all about embodiment. And I, I just sense yet you give really very beautiful, intelligent information, but the other part is really that it's moving in the whole system. And this I really appreciate and love about your work because it's kind of, it's, it's fulfilling its purpose in a way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. That's great. Wonderful feedback. And in a way, you know, the theory is a way of giving the mind permission to let go of one perspective and try another one.